Who would you rather build a franchise around if you were starting from scratch right now? Anthony Edwards or Shea Gilgis Alexander? This is a real heartbreaker of a question. And in fact, we did uh, before this season our like top got top 10 guys 25 and under to build a franchise around. I believe I had them either three and four or four and five. And I had Ant one spot above SGA. I think I'm gonna flip now. No, oh, did actually, I have SGA above? You had we both had SGA four and five. All right, perfect. I never switch up. I'm sticking with SGA then. And I think that what's tough about this conversation is we are viewing a more final version of SGA. It just in that he's a couple years older. I'm not saying either of these dudes are totally what they're going to be for the rest of their careers, but I think that Ant still has more room for growth, but there's a big gap between these two as basketball players right now. There's a big gap. And I think the key advantages for me with SGA are first of all, the level of control that he imposes over a basketball game, the ability out of pick and roll to dictate the pace to play, make at a really high level. He just is the captain of an offense in a way that Ant isn't right now. And I'm not sure he will be. I also think, you look at the versatility in shot making that SGA has, it's legitimately unbelievable. He's one of the hardest dudes in the league to stay in front of, not because of straight line speed, but because of maybe the nastiest change in pace that I've ever seen. Nobody shifts gears like SGA. But then he is also one of the most devastating mid-range shooters in the league. He's so great at using physicality to create space there. He has this ballerina body control where he's just going to get where he wants on the floor. And uh, at the same time, like he's been crazy efficient out of the post when he wants to be. He's got such good footwork and body control down there. He just has a mastery of the skilled scoring and doing that in various different ways that Ant doesn't have. And these guys are both elite athletes. It's just different. Ant is like your prototypical 99th percentile strength, 99th percentile explosiveness, 99th percentile vertical ability. SGA's athleticism to me is in the shiftiness. It's in the balance, the body control. He just does stuff in the paint navigating that nobody else on the planet can. Uh, and then I think if you look at the defensive side of the ball, I think that they have very similar potential. I do like SGA a bit more as a help defender. And I think that what we've seen from him in terms of defensive playmaking this year has been super impressive. His length can just be game-changing at times. Ant has that stronger base. So it's similar, but I do think it comes down to the like all-around dominant, versatile scoring plus really high-end playmaking with SGA. Ant, I think you have the crazy rim pressure. You have the pull-up shooting stretches but you just don't have that sort of all-around polish, and I'm not sure if you will on the level of SGA. But I think both these guys are perennial MVP candidates for years and years. Yeah, I think if you're ever in this scenario, uh, you were blessed as an NBA franchise. Uh, if these were the two guys you were picking between, I'm actually going to flop here, Carson. I also had SGA Ooh. 4 and Ant 5. And I think you make a great point. SGA is definitely more realized uh, you know, to his full potential. Uh, I don't think Ant's done yet. And I just think the physical level of pressure that he is going to be able to put on the rim, I think that the special kind of strong, vertical, quick athlete that he is, I just think that – I don't think he's done. I mean, I think we are going to see him just become effectively unstoppable. And I think his game – SGA, I think, is more tailored to the playoffs right now. Like, if you were asking me for this season, what guy do I want more to go on a run? There's a lot more polish on SGA. I trust him way more as an offensive engine – an initiator, but I see a different ceiling because of Ant's athletic advantages. That being said, I think you make a good point. I don't know if Ant's ever going to be the, I don't think Ant is capable of becoming the kind of pull up and unstoppable shooter that SGA is in the lane. He is one of the most special in the league, but I'm going to take those physical advantages. I just think that matters a little more. I think that Ant is going to be an unstoppable tank. And if he can couple that with elite pull up jump shooting, weaponizing his rim pressure into playmaking. Like, I just think he's got, he's already great, but I think he, there is even more room to grow with Anthony Edwards. So I'm going to take Ant. The, the, you know, kind of important phrase that kind of dictates this conversation is starting a franchise with, because a couple of caveats, I do think SGA is a better basketball player right now. And I do think that he would navigate a playoff environment a little bit better than Ant right now. 
I do think that they are very, very different archetypes of players. And so it can also get complicated in the sense that like some of the stuff that Anthony Edwards is not good at is kind of natural for his archetype. And some of the stuff that SGA is not good at Mm -hmm. is kind of natural for his archetype and so on and so forth. The here's the, here's the big difference for me. I think Anthony Edwards is not only on a, a trajectory in the in the bigger picture that I think could take him to a significantly higher level than he is now, but he also has the I think he's a more natural fit alongside other stars. Anthony mm-hmm. Edwards is actually a decent off-ball scorer, and I mean that off the move like coming off of off-ball screens, cutting to the rim, and he's just a much better catch and shoot player which is a significant advantage when it comes to playing alongside other players around the league. SGA has just a tiny bit of that like heliocentric when the ball's in my hands Mm -hmm. and I'm in rhythm, everything looks good, but then my value tends to take a dip when I'm not on the ball as much. much. And then everything, everything with Anthony Edwards is a pretty strong indicator of him being a great shooter in the long run. For starters, his last 25 games... Because, like, remember, at the beginning of this year, he was kind of a little bit uh, rough around the edges offensively. Anthony averages the last 25 games, 27 points per game, five rebounds, five assists, 49% from the field, 41% from three, and 84% from the line. And he's on, like, pretty decent volume from three. He's taking something like six threes a game over that span. So, like, that's a that's a third of the season that he's been a high-volume 40% three-point shooter. And, like... You see it in the foul shooting. You see it in the hot stretches of pull-up shooting. Like, I think when we fast forward a few years, he's going to be a devastating combination of downhill force and power with pull-up shooting. And again, like, if I'm starting a franchise, I know that I can bring in another high-usage offensive player and that Ant's going to be able to kind of, like, fit in with him well and make that all work. I also think, you know, Carson, you mentioned... Shea's off-ball defense, and I agree, he's excellent instincts and length and ability to kind of just get in and make plays. But the important distinction there is like Ant's still not very good at that stuff off the ball. True. And and like I I think there's a version of this five years from now. Like I when I think about 27-year-old Anthony Edwards, I think about a guy that could be the best player in the world. That's the potential that I think he has. Whereas like Shea, I think he kind of is already pretty close to what his ceiling is at this point. And there are some areas where he can prove specifically off the ball. Right. But like, to me, Ant is already pretty close to as good as Shea is. And he's got so much more room for improvement. And then you guys know me just in general, I talked about this with Luca versus KD, but like, give me the guy who can physically impose his will on the game. Like, like that, that to me is, is such a huge element to winning in the playoffs. Like, You can just imagine Ant being this ridiculous matchup attacking back to the basket guard in the postseason. And it it, like he thrives in like ultra physical environments. And, you know, I think I I think that to me is just the differentiator in the long run. I I do have one last question before we get out of here. And we'll we'll start with you, Logan. Like, are you expecting Shea to have a drop off in efficiency and production in this postseason? Or do you think he'll be able to sustain it? That's a great question. Uh, I think you made a great point, Jason, about him being a heliocentric player. I think that in that archetype, I think those players are just always more susceptible because, I mean, just think about it. I mean, you're every possession, you're having to play defense, you're on ball. Then on the other side of the ball, you've got the ball in your hands. Like you're just going to get inherently tired throughout a series, throughout a game. It's just going to wear you down. So I think he is more susceptible to that. I don't know, man. I don't think I could ever predict SGA to, to like fall. He's so dynamic. He can get to whatever spot he wants. Now, I think that's the big factor is that game five, game six, game seven, is he going to be downtrodden? Is he going to be worn out? That scares me. At the end of regular games where he's playing 40 minutes a night, is he going to be worn out? I don't know. I, that's the one area where I think he could maybe be susceptible to lulls, to falling off. But in terms of shot diet, decision making, shots he gets to, there are very few players in the NBA that I expect their games will translate better to the postseason because SGA can do it from everywhere. He's a great playmaker. He does he does everything. My only concern is just him getting really worn out and tired from having to carry the burden. Uh, you know that entire offensive burden. Yeah. I would expect SGA to be a guy who actually scales really well to the playoffs. And 
I think that you make a great point, Jason, and an advantage that Ant has, and a lot of the great playoff risers have. Jimmy Butler, Kawhi Leonard. They are dudes who can impose themselves with strength. The ultimate advantage of that is that you get to your spots no matter what in that physical environment. I feel like SGA is the exception, though, in that he is uh, so masterful with the pace that he plays at that I can't really see people keeping him out of the paint even in that playoff environment. Again, he's not going to do it with strength, but he's going to do that with those shifts and gears, and he doesn't have to get to the rim. And at this stage, really, it's mostly threes or it's attempts at the rim, and he's like a crazy contested finisher because he's such a great athlete, and he has been a really good shooter this year and continued to grow there. But if you do try to wall off an SGA drive, well, he can just devastate you with that short mid-range shot making. And he's the better playmaker at this stage. So I expect SGA to have quite a debut in the playoffs as the guy. He's been there before, but not as this superstar player. But I also think Ant's a guy who's going to get better in the playoffs. And Ant's a guy who's already gotten better in the playoffs because, yeah, his strength scales very well. And his pull-up shooting has been really good in those settings. But I think SGA is a dude who... I mean, maybe not in a world where Nikola Jokic exists, but, you know, in a post-Jokic world, I think he could have best player in the world ceiling too, along with that. An important thing we didn't even touch to is like, Ant's getting you 27-5-5 five and five on 49-41-84 splits, and there's no question that the Thunder provide a significantly more spaced out environment for for SGA to operate in just to, mm -hmm. by virtue of just having a legitimate stretch five that you have to close out to and just all of the ball handling and shooting around him. I think it's a little bit more of an easy setup. The reason why I brought that up is a, as kind of a playoff scenario is specifically the shifty types. And I'll give you an example, James Harden, the shifty types that lean heavily on heliocentric shot creation from the same spots on the floor. One of the things we see is like, yeah, that hesitation moves pretty nasty, but what if a singular perimeter defender sees it 150 times in, a, in two weeks? You know, James Harden has this ridiculous, you know, left to right crossover, step back, jump shot combination, like the set of counter moves that he uses. And then what ends up happening is the same perimeter defend, defender sees it 150 times. And by game six and game seven, he has a good read on that hesitation. He has a good read on when he's going to go to that left to right cross. He has a good read on how to kind of like close the gap on that step back jump shot without fouling and making it into a tougher shot. Whereas like the supremely gifted athletes, they tend to actually get more and more separation as series pro prolong because they're the energizer bunny, because they're those groups. And I agree with you, Carson. I don't think it's not that I don't think Shea has best in the world potential. I just think, I think if I had to rank where they are right now, SGA is clearly over Ant. But for me personally, if I had to rank ceilings, I think Ant's ceiling is higher than SGA's right now just because of those gifts. All right, I, we've got to get out of here. You can go add ahead, one go real quick thing about why SGA feels different in the playoffs to me than Harden. I do think it comes down to the variety of counters as one thing. I think that he simply has more moves that he can turn to at any point. I think, right, the spins – creating separation with a little arm bar into the mid-range step back. And that's the other key point. Harden was very reliant on the step back three specifically. And you talked earlier about Tatum, the concerns with the volatility about his pull-up, his reliance on pull-up threes. And Harden just never shot as well in, in the playoff settings from deep. So I totally agree about the predictability with him. And I just, or, or SGA, I just feel is different because he gets to his spots in and around the paint. And because he is so creative and versatile in those spots. Yeah, I, I don't. I want to be clear. I'm not. I'm not comparing SGA to Harden in terms of like I expect him to be a playoff flameout. That, that's not yeah. what I mean. I just mean more like a guard shot creator that doesn't necessarily rely on supreme athleticism to get to his spots, but relies more on like the you know kind of the change of pace and and, and change of direction kind of stuff. Like I do think that I do think it's on the table, and I'm just curious to see. I am curious to see how SGA handles real playoff game planning. And, and like, what 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 happens if he does? Like, let's say they run into to Minnesota. What does Jaden McDaniel's guarding SGA look like in Game Six? What does it look like in Game Seven? I'm just curious. That that's all it is. And like, just NBA history tells us the supreme athlete types they tend to be less susceptible to that kind of thing in late series than uh, uh, than the more finesse oriented types. But to be clear, I do not think SGA is the next James Harden. I never intended for it to be like that. That was just kind of an example of just 
playoff, uh, just kind of the dynamic that shifts as you get later into a playoff series. 